Hi guys, it's Matt here from MCS Books and today I'm going to do another video in a series that I started called Bad Book, Good Movie. Now, if you haven't seen my first video, I'm going to link it down below so you can watch that. But if you don't want to, you'll pretty much get the gist in this video too. So what I'm doing is I choose a book that I found really disappointing. I'm going to match it with a film director who I love and I'm going to discuss a way that I feel the book could be better as a movie. So, today I feel like I might do a bit of a controversial book with a controversial match. The book today is this one, The Lesser Bohemians by Aimee McBride. I really hated this book. Many people might have heard about this book and about the writing style. Now the writing style itself isn't horrendously bad. Once you start reading it, you get into the pattern really quickly and you kind of forget about how the writing style is so different from what you're used to. I feel a lot of the argumentation about liking or disliking the book kind of stems from this concept of you have to be intelligent to read it. Absolutely not the case. It has nothing to do with one's reading intelligence or language intelligence. It is a case of tastes. For me, the writing style, which most often is pitched as a sort of stream of consciousness, like how we form sentences in our mind and stuff, I believe is not true. It has no, it has no semblance to what the voice inside your head is going to be like. It's just a way to be different, a way to be unique. I think it's just the unique selling point of an otherwise badly written book. But this book is about a young 18 year old Irish girl who comes to London for the first time and she has um, a obsessive love affair with an older man. That's just the basic premise of it. Perhaps that was the thing I didn't like the most is that it was this obsessive love. I mean, sure, I mean, very reminiscent of, of Kathy from Wuthering Heights. It just, it was kind of like the main drive of the story and I hated that, it was just so boring. It was kind of, it didn't really feel real, it just felt like the author was picking things to kind of keep the story going at times. Um, the main character just was bland. Her love interest was kind of, I feel very, stereotypical and then he has a moment where he takes over the narrative where he's telling a story and it was just kind of like okay great cool story i'm sure it's sad but i feel like it was forced to be more sad than it actually was so yeah i did not get on well with this book um but many people did and many people enjoyed the style enjoyed the story enjoyed the characters and the morally ambiguous kind of sense of all the characters. For me, I much more enjoyed actually like the very few descriptions of life in London at the time, which you didn't get much of anyway, because it was all focused on love. However, let me talk about how I think this, in my opinion, bad book could then be made into a good or better movie. Now, to stick with the choice of a controversial book, I said I'm gonna do a controversial match. I feel like in some way, some people would believe that this story needs to be directed by a woman. For me, this is not a feminist story at all. I don't feel any value would be added or subtracted were it directed from a woman. So I am actually going to match it with a male director. Now I know that in the film industry, we need more female directors getting more films, but I would like to propose a change in this story, which would require a male director and in particular a gay director, and in particular my favourite gay male director, Xavier Dolan. Now let me explain my choice for this. Xavier Dolan is, like I said, one of my all-time favourite film, film directors. He's a Quebecois guy, and all of his films so far to date have been in French. He, his most recent film is coming out in English, and I feel a lot of people in the LGBTQ plus community, especially particularly amongst gay men, would know, might know some of his films and might enjoy some of his films and his work. Other people who might not have ever heard of him might have actually seen some of his work before because he directed Adele's music video, Hello. And his most recent film that's coming out, I think this year, is going to have a big, famous English-speaking cast, like Jessica Chastain and what's his face from Game of Thrones, Kit. Harrington, I want to say. Oh, and the child star from Wonder. Uh, I'm really bad with names, sorry. Anyway, so now I'm gonna explain my choices. I feel like I've just gone on a ramble about my favorite film director. First things first, I want to get rid of Eileen as a woman and replace her with a young, 
guy. I don't personally feel like this book empowers the feminine in any way, it doesn't really explore it, it just is, which could be seen as a good thing for feminism, like it's just a story from a girl's perspective and it just deals with it as norm, which is fine in itself, but I feel like there's a part of this book, specifically the part that comes from the, the love interest, his story, that kind of could be dealt with throughout the entire text, and similar to what I wanted from All That Man Is, in my last video, I thought this book could be actually a really good commentary on masculinity and the need for feminism within, within the exploration of masculinity. I also think it could have a lot of power for the time that it's set in, it's set in the 90s. I feel like it could have a lot of power for um, the exploration of gay protagonists. Um, in particular, I think it could be a really great sort of contrast to obviously the film that's come out recently, Call Me By Your Name, based on the book by Andre Asselman. Now that film is getting a lot of flack online. It's kind of very, po it's caused a lot of polarization within its audience where some people absolutely love it. It's particularly, I feel young gay men absolutely love it. But then also people who find it really damaging and dangerous because it's a love interest between a 17 year old guy and an older guy who's a, I think a doctorate student in university. I haven't read the book, I haven't watched the film, um, but I am interested in doing it so. But I have kind of looked up on the argumentation against it, which I feel is a bit unwarranted. It's kind of, it's forcing people to be victims who might not be victims anyway. So I feel that an adaptation of this book from a gay perspective could do really well. Now, now that doesn't mean that there isn't space within, within that exploration of masculinity for kind of non-binary genders, um, there could be potential there, but that's not what I'm going to focus on. What I'm going to focus on is Savia Dolan's handling of this book as an LGBTQ plus film. So in, the, in regards to the language of the book, it is very experimental, it's stream of consciousness, and it kind of is disjointed all over the place, very much meant to be the inside of someone's head, which suggests that there needs to be some level of cinematic experimentation. Xavier Dolan has a very particular cinematic language. If you watch his films, for example, I Kill My Mother, Heartbeats, and Lawrence Anyways, you will see that he has this hyper-realist telling within the cinema, but then he juxtaposes scenes with powerful surrealist moments that kind of just disjoint the whole text. That's something that could be handled so well within this book. To have this hyper-realism storytelling and setting up of the camera, or uh, setting up of the scenes, and then suddenly juxtaposing it with this sort of very disjointed cinematic technique where you add symbolism and alternative meaning. Another part of this text, because it's told directly from the main character's perspective, you're not actually given explicitly all the, all the multiple layers of meaning that the characters say and do. Um, you, can't, you, you ascribe yourself just from the knowledge of being human. So I feel like Xavier Dolan's technique in this way could enhance that sort of, me that multi-layering of meanings. Another great experimentation that Delan did, in particular in his film Mummy, which was incredible. It deals with a boy who has anger management difficulties and he's constantly feeling trapped within himself and it kind of like, it bursts out. And when you watch this film, you are very much in his mindset and you may not realize why sometimes, but then, it, but then it becomes obvious later on. So that every time that the main character in the film is kind of stuck in himself and he's just feeling trapped and pressured and everything, the aspect ratio of the film is lessened. So the entire film is shot with a much closer presence to the, to the main protagonist. But then when his anger explodes or when he finally feels free from this pressure, the aspect ratio then enhances and you, you, you get that same feeling. Now that's something that could be handled so well. This technique, the cinematic language, could just enhance the feeling of the main protagonist in this. So that when, when the main protagonist is feeling claustrophobic or trapped within this whole obsessive love with, within the scene of London at the time, to have the aspect ratio lessened could really enhance that. And then there's moments of passion, of sex, of drive, of everything. And to have the aspect ratio change with it could really empower the feeling that kind of is given within the scene. So now I also want to about, talk about the LGBTQ aspect of it. Savia Delan's films have pretty much mostly been based around 
LGBTQ topics. He deals with trans characters, he mostly deals with gay characters. He has this playfulness of sexuality and love, which I feel could really enhance this book. I feel like, again, enhancing this book with the LGBTQ themes, particularly the, a gay theme, can really tackle questions that are being asked right now in response to Call Me By Your Name. It can deal with this whole concept of young and old love, which, which I feel is demonised so much more within the gay community than it is within the straight community. But it could also explore the story of the older love interest in a much more powerful way. Because the way it's told in this story didn't really do anything for me. It was just like, oh, boo-hoo, you've had terrible things and now you're a terrible person. And, and somehow, you know, love love conquers all and the ending was just so disappointing and whatnot. Whereas I feel enhancing these sort of memories and sexuality, exploring the male, the, the male love interest within a sort of fluid way. I, I don't say the male, the male love interest has to be gay, bisexual, pansexual. It will just enhance this kind of feeling of, of inner turmoil, of kind of self-discovery and trying to really understand yourself through the events in the past that could have shaped you in a certain way. I feel like Delan really handles this well, especially in relationships of um, sons and mums. It recurs a lot in all of his films, and but he handles this relationship between mother and son in such a way that, you know, I feel, I feel breaches the topic and explores it in myriad ways that are really powerful. And I feel that he can then handle that situation so well in adapting this story, this particular story. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'm really intrigued as to what you think about my, my matching, um, particularly what you think about Lesser Bohemians and what do you, how would you feel, and if the genders in the film were flipped, what, how would you feel that would enhance or do you feel it would detract from something? Do you feel that this book is particularly feminist in ways that I don't? And, and how would you match it up to a film director? How do you think a female film director would do it? So let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time for another video. Bye bye.